Hello guys, welcome back to Learning Solidity. So in this video, we'll talk about delegate calls. But before we start talking about delegate call, we need to talk about context in smart contracts. So we can say a context is all the environment-like variables at the point of execution. For example, if you have a contract like we have here, contract A and contract B, on the point of executing the contract A, the user that executed the contract A function is the context to contract A, the message of sender in the context to contract A. So in Ethereum smart contract, there are lots of contexts one of which we know which is a message or sender which is very popular which we use a lot so delegate call is a low level function just like the call method except it keeps the original context just to show a simple example here we all know that normally using the type casting or the call method if contract b should call a function in contract a the message or sender in contract b will be the address that called the function but in contract a the message or sender will be this contract address which is contract b's address with delegate call is totally different. Once you call a contract in once you call a function in contract B, and that function is calling a function using delegate call in contract A, the MSG the sender in contract B and contract A will be exactly the same. So the user who called contract B will still be the same user who calls contract A. And also if the code is changing state variables, the variable that will be changed will be in contract B. Just think of it as one acting as a proxy and the other being the main contract. So see this in code, I have two contracts here, right here. I'll declare some variables here. Let's just see. Let's declare. Okay, let's declare an address. This address will be the user. User address. Let's declare balance. This unit. Let's declare a balance. And let's declare each. Just to show you something. Okay, this is it. I'll declare a function right now. This function will update these variables. So function initialize and you should just take the age variable which will be the age age and just use this as in here and we'll make this public and payable and um, so in here user address will be equal to message sender and balance will be equal to MSG dot value and the age will be equal to age the user past 10. Okay, this is it. So in contract B we'll create exactly the same state variables. Also note that the for the order in which you order the variables matters a lot. We can write here by changing three variables and using delegate call, this will not have effect on these variables in contract A. It will affect the variables in contract B. And if these variables are not arranged in the same order, it will be scattered like H can be the balance. So this is it. And um, we'll create a function here. And this function will call the initialization method. What this function takes is the address of the contract. And um, it takes the age also, which is a uint and h. We make this public payable and nothing else, I guess. All right. To call using delegate call to call a function, it's just the same as using the call method. So what we have to do is the address, which we've forgotten from here, and the delegate call. And um, right here, we can specify the contract we are trying to call, which is the, we're using the abi.encoding, encode with signature rather. And right here, the first parameter is the function signature, which is initialized. And this function takes just uint 256. And the second parameter is the value, which is the age. Once you're using delegate call, you can't specify a value because the value is persistent. If we should try, let me just end this. So if we should try specifying a value right here, the value will get an error. We can get this just one. Once you go over here, you see it's not allowed in delegate calls. So remove this. Just like the call method, it also returns two values, which is um, Boolean sources and bytes which is um the result of the data let me just give it results 
before you deploy this contract um let's just make this public i always forget to make this public i don't know why so this is public public um we just copy this All right, so now we should deploy this contract, contract A and contract B. So if we should check state variables, and you can see zero zero, this is the default, this is the default um, values of these data types. And if we check this, this is also zero. But we'll just watch right now, if we should copy contract A address, pass it in here, and then pass in the age, let's say 12 years old. And once we call initialization, and we check because initialization is initializing these variables but once we check this we can see they are still zero they are still in zeros like they did not change but once we check contract b we can see contract b changed i did not pass the value okay they just pass the value so this one eta and um call it again all right so once we check this we can see contract B was the variable that changed. So delegate call will keep this the context of the contract persistent. And once it calls contract A, since you're doing a delegate call, this contract A just as if this contract A function is being deployed down here. So it will, it will change the state variables of contract B and not contract A. Contract A variables will still be the same variables. So this is the way you can update, you can upgrade your smart contract. At times, most developers use one smart contract for storage. To create a smart contract that holds all state variables and a smart contract that interacts with those state variables so this way they can differentiate the storage from the main code of the smart contract so that's it on delegate call in the next video we'll talk about sending ether to smart contracts and please if you have any comments or if there was something confusing i said leave it in the comment section below have a good day and i'll see you all in the next video